All right, folks, welcome back. A much-requested return of the HTSAI podcast, but we're doing things substantially different now, obviously. Uh, we're going to do it on video. Uh, we're going to share it. It'll go up on YouTube, and then we'll we'll have a playlist for it, a podcast playlist for it, and then we'll just share the crap out of it. So you guys make sure you're following and uh, sharing it. Help us out a little bit with that. And uh, we're not doing all the same stuff we used to do. So we're not going to go over the entire iRacing uh, schedule for the week like we used to because A, I don't want to, and B, it wasn't that popular. Some of the other stuff, however, was popular, like talking about the um, upcoming broadcast schedule and what we're doing during the week. And, of course, uh, interviews are coming back, and that's where we are starting today with because we have Jared Heasley of BRR fame, uh, the fearless leader of BRR is with us this morning. Good morning, Jared. Morning, Doug. How are you? I am good. Great to have you. I think this this interview may be long overdue. Uh, you know, it's it, it's been talked about in the past, and I don't think we ever got it done previously. So it's great to finally get this done. Yeah, it's always good to talk to you, and it's it's always fun to, to chat about iRacing racing and get everything going and help the channel out. Well, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I know you've got, you work nights, so you're going to want to get to sleep soon, so we'll get right into this. So, how long have you been on iRacing? March of 2020. So, we're looking at, we're going on four years on iRacing. Wow. Uh, I know you've done a lot of oval stuff, and especially, uh, you're exceedingly good at building a setup for the next-gen cars. You've been extremely successful um in those in the uh in the officials yeah i haven't run a lot of officials recently just because it's difficult to run officials a lot of people out there that just don't have the the ability that i'm looking for to have fun racing against but yeah i I enjoy building setups and i enjoy that part of i racing um but it does become a, a a challenge it's it's a very difficult um scene to get going in this thing <laughs> it definitely is and as we both found out there was a point that HTSAI did the free setups and it was a time consuming thing and the other part of that with building setups is there is a lot of drama when it comes to doing the setups i mean when you and i used to build them I, we would do it we would stream it while we were doing it and we had setup shop owners literally watching the streams to make sure we weren't doing anything that they deemed not right or anything like that. So it was not only time consuming, but just a hassle. Yeah. Plus you have people that want to do different things and, and have a different feel and they'll tell you, oh, well, this doesn't feel like this. Well, this is how I want this car to drive. I can. I can build you a setup for just about any track and put you in a range around a world record, but it's going to feel good to me. It's yeah. not going to feel good to everybody. So it became a challenge, and it just got too much, I think. It, it really did, and when you when you have a life outside of iRacing and you're spending that much time involved in it, it does become a bit of a headache. And Like I said, at the end of the day, if, if it was profitable or if it was you know a little bit less controversial it'd have been worth it to keep doing it but i mean i could build truck setups that everybody could run top three top five in but at the end of the day it was just too much of a hassle and too much drama yeah but it was fun well what lasted a couple years ago i guess it was a lot of fun and and we got a lot of input and learned a lot because people were always contributing uh, information and thoughts and i still got a notebook or enter somewhere of hey do this do this do this and, and it you know you reached a point i think you and i talked about it, if you build a setup for charlotte or atlanta uh, you've got a really good base and you can work from that and and there's a lot of stuff you can learn from it but uh, man it, it was it was a lot of fun back then and Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes when I'm sitting here practicing, especially with the hand controls, uh, I actually sit there and tune on the setup a little bit still. Oh, yeah, I always do that. And I think that's the nice part. Something we're going to talk about a little bit later on, I think, is I'm still getting the building stuff. I'm working with FKR and helping Gerald with the street stocks are a little bit different. But 
a lot of the setups you're going to see with FKR are going to have my input on it. So I'm looking forward to still continuing to do that, just at a lower level. Well, bringing that up, you're you're racing uh, intermittently this season in XCAL with Flaming Karma, and I do believe you're racing at uh, Charlotte this week. Yeah, I, I, I will have uh, heat races tonight. I'm planning to run 8.30 the heat race tonight. And then I'll be I'll be in the X Cal opener tomorrow, so that should be interesting to say the least. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I noticed uh, looking looking through it and prep for this. One of the interesting things is no pit road speed limit. Has the team practiced for that? I I don't. I mean, the team may have. I haven't. Uh, so I mean, I'll get there. It, it shouldn't be. I mean, it's going to be hard to figure out. It's going to be harder tomorrow to figure out, um, like, where you're pitting and then, you know, get into get into that stall as quickly as possible. It's going to be chaos, I think. I think it will be for sure. Knowing that you've got a lot of XCAL going on, working with Gerald a lot, what else, uh, outside of XCAL, what else do you have going on in iRacing? I know you've kind of taken a step back to a degree lately. Yeah, it just got, I got to a point where I got, um, I don't want to say overwhelmed. I just got over uh, oversaturated, I guess you could say, in, in eye racing. I got to a point where um, life just wasn't quite there, and eye racing was too far. So I kind of took a step back recently, and but um, we're getting back a little bit. Um, Mark Nelson and I are running the the Roar this weekend. Uh, we're going to run the GT4, the the Merc GT4. Um, I'm going to be able to paint for that this week and then keep practicing that. And then the week after we got a five man team and GTP, uh, Cadillac that's going after the 24 hour. The 24 hours I know is something you've done just about every year. You do a lot of these bigger events like the, uh, Daytona 500, the Coke 600, uh, a lot of those big events and you've been successful in a lot of them. Well, yeah, I mean, we talk about going back and building setups two straight years. I built a setup that won two straight Coke 600s, which is, to me, probably the best feat that I've had in eye racing on ovals. And then Mark Dantuma and I finished second in the six-hour Watkins Glen GT3 a few months back. So I really enjoy the uh, the longer races, the endurance races. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting back into that this season as well. <laughs> the irony being you're getting better at them and it's getting harder for me to do them. But, uh, man, I know that first uh, 24 hours we did and we had the two BRR teams, that was just, I mean, it was a learning experience for all of us, but it was just so, so much fun. And you really learn uh, a lot that carries over to all the other endurance races. I know but you'll see more people at Daytona than anywhere else, but uh, it's it's a learning experience as much as anything, but uh, starting at Daytona, you learn a lot and can do more endurance racing. Oh, absolutely. You know, Daytona is the greatest. I, I think I think everybody should take a whack at the 24-hour Daytona, even if you're a dirt guy as far away from road racing as you can. You know, you're not going to have a great IR. Just come out, get a team together, get your dirt buddies together, and go race, and just go do it. It's, it's such an experience with survival for 24 hours, um, staying, staying clean, and then just being consistent for 24 hours. And if you don't make all 24 hours, come back, do it again next year. I, every year I'm motivated to do it. Every year. Yeah, I think I, this has been the most motivated I've been since uh, 2021, and and. Honestly, I just have not, uh, I, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to run it at this point, just because I'm still struggling with the hand controls, but I, I've not been more motivated to run it. It just gets more exciting every year. It gets bigger every year, and man, it's, uh, it is definitely an experience. Um, on, the, on the note of uh, events, I'm hopeful that with some of the recent rumblings and some of the recent things. I'm hoping the IndyCar comes back to iRacing because I think IndyCar benefits from iRacing. I know iRacing benefits from, from the IndyCar coming back, but we need the Indy 500 on, on iRacing. Like, that was such an event. And missing it last year because of their own undoing with giving Motorsport Games the <laughs> contract, 
really, really, like last May just was not the same. I was not able to prepare for the Indy 500, and it was, it just wasn't the same. Uh, I have to agree with you on that one. I think, uh, and I do believe the Indy 500 will be back this year, which will be really awesome. But, uh, man, I know the that I've ran it just about every year now, and, and it is just so much fun. Even if you don't do well, running the Indy 500 is, is an experience in and of itself. I think we I ran it three times one year and finished top ten all three, but... Uh, in the first one I did, ended up getting wrecked early, having to repair as the race went on, still fighting back. I mean, it's just the, those type of events really are just a huge experience. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little, it sucks because the last time I was able to run it was the fixed Indy 500. And I finished second by a couple car links, essentially. So I know just a personal experience. I, I want it back just to give me a shot to win at it. But at the same time, like I said, I think it benefits everybody to to be back. And hopefully they figure it out, get the contract figured out before May and can come back to iRacing. And, and uh, IndyCar's not really doing all that well, I don't think. And I think it needs iRacing to kind of help it out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because uh, as we've learned, motorsports games, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a whole another it's, ball of wax. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a killer. They've they've now gone bankrupt, and I don't know. I don't think they're a company anymore, so I don't know where that contract could be. Uh, last I heard, last I saw on Twitter, is rumor has it that iRacing is completing negotiations, and Indy will be back. So, but that's you know, uh, that's the word on social media. What you got to wait for something official from iRacing. So, right. You've been, uh, you've been admin for B, uh, BRR for a while now. How long has it been since you took the reins from AJ? A year and a half, maybe, maybe two years at this point. I think it's been three or four seasons, basically. I think. Yeah, it sounds about right. And I know, uh, AJ still races. Does he still give a lot of input? Oh, they all do. AJ does, um, Obviously, I have a great group of admins there, and I can't run it without those guys. And um, you know, that's that's the best way to keep a league going. I think we've both been part of leagues, and you've broadcasted for leagues, and I've raced in those leagues that they fail because of a lack of communication, and because of um, you know one or two drivers or a group of drivers rebelling or doing whatever, but. You have to stay on top of things and try to make it best for everyone. And and uh, we have a great group of people. You know, it, it's it really talks to those people, the guys that have been there for the beginning, like Jeff Hinkle, or the guys that have been here for a year, like like Cody Kennedy, that you know will always give you input and always be there in a solid base. It definitely is, and 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 that speaks to my next question. BRR is three and a half years old. I mean, it started. AJ started it July of twenty twenty, I believe, and yeah. it, they've been around. I mean, we've been around. I've been there since the very first race, which was ARCA at Daytona, and I did not. I finished like top ten, but it was not a great race. But uh, BRR has continued to consistently grow, uh, and the the base of it is still there. But they've con- you know, two nights of racing every weekend, uh, continual growth, and the the league as a whole just is still really, really healthy. It's uh, unusual to see a league with this kind of longevity. Yeah, like I said, it just speaks to the the people that that we are able to have. You know, it's it's not just a group of people racing together; it's a group of friends racing together. You know, it's. It's a it's a community. It's not just oh we get together and race. It's you know you have friends. You talk to these guys. You, you and, and you, then you end up talking to these guys not just on Sundays, but then you end up talking to these guys on a Wednesday. You know I get messages from Bill Percy every day of the week sometimes, <laughs> just just random crap out of nowhere. Like hey, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, hey, why am I slow here? Hey, what's going on here? What's going on with that? It's great. You know that's it's. It's what we're looking for. Yeah, I'm going to be competitive with them on Sunday, but then on Wednesday, we're buddy-buddy. It's just, it's the greatest atmosphere to be around. It's totally different than anything you're going to find in most gaming or racing communities, even. Uh, I will have to agree with that. I talked to Wild Bill several times a week. I talked to Mark Nelson, Mark Bantuma, a lot of these guys. And the great thing has been, 
with BRR, especially a the support of uh, the How to Suck at Eye racing has been amazing, except for that one Jar Jar race. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was just crap. crap. <laughs> 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 but the the funny thing about it is the BRR tends to spread out and go to other leagues. Um, a lot of a lot of the guys are going from you know started in BRR but are racing in Jones or NSS or. Um, like XCAL with you and Gerald and several others. And there's even a BRR car in XCAL now. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've spread our wings a bit. You know, I think, um, it started with BRR with us. And then I, I went to the outlaws, the outcast with Chris Standridge. And then, you know, we got guys like David Garman into BRR from that. And then all of a sudden we got an NSS and Mark Nelson and Mark Dantuma and Nicole who, still races NSS is there and then you know we go into XCAL and we get Gerald and we bring in Albert so it's it's a pretty cool thing that all of a sudden we have road guys dirt guys oval guys just come into BRR and it BRR just keeps going no. so it doesn't matter who you are just come in and race with us you'll find it it's 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 here yeah, and the interesting part of that is with that, I mean, especially this season, the growth has been, I mean, the growth in the Cup Series was dramatic to the point where um, a few guys needed to step down and run truck only because the fields were, you know, almost 40 cars in the first five or six races. It was, it, it, it's really nuts how quickly you grow, which brings another question. I mean, how long before BRR needs another series because it's so full? We, we approached that topic, and I, I think um, I think it's something that can be approached again in, in the next season. I mean, that's, that's the winter season, though, as well. I think in the summers, you're going to die a little bit because people are doing more, you know, picnics and, and real racing, and we have guys that actually go out and race on Saturdays, and um, guys that want to go out and race on Saturdays, Mason Foster and Bill and some of these guys. Um, and then we have guys that just, you know, they have kids and they have a family and they have a wife and they want to go out and do that. So then, then you hit the winter and everybody's like, well, it's cold. I need something to do. <laughs> Let's go race. And you end up with 35 people at Daytona and we're thinking, we're going to die. <laughs> we're all gonna die and somehow daytona was honestly one of the best races we've had maybe ever yeah that was uh, that race as a whole was nuts uh it was really fun broadcasting that because it came at one point i mentioned about part way through that you know it might be one of those situations where they went green to checkers because it had been green despite all of the passing and the moves and a couple of incidents where guys went off track on the back straightaway. Everybody still managed to keep it green for so long. Yeah, it was um, it was one of those white knuckle things where you know that it's going to happen. You know that at some point something's going to happen and you're just waiting for it. But at the same time, I want to lead. I want to get to the front. And I want to try to win this race. And I got close, but we just couldn't quite get there. Now, one of the things you guys implemented this season, I believe there's a bonus for zero incident points, and that seems to have made a huge uh, huge difference. Yeah, that that was a difficult thing. Um, we, we talked about doing that in the past, but the hardest part was iRacing can be really um, interesting on their determinations on an X versus not an X. Times where you, you make contact very very uh, slightly and get an X and then times where you do make contact and it's like hard contact and you don't get an X for one reason or another. But I think ultimately that stuff evens out. And I think if you're a clean driver, you may not have those issues. But I, I do think it's helped and I think it's something that a lot of leagues should look into on those bonus points. I think it's I think it's something that has helped this league. It, it definitely has. And uh, speaking of that, I mean, the... The, the size of the group it, it, in the cup cars is still 20 to 25 every week, and yet still a lot of uh, a lot of great clean racing. Looking at last night, it was a little bit of a rough night, but it's to be expected on a short track like North Wilkesboro. But there was a couple of 
40 plus lap green flag runs in there. So, I mean, it, it really speaks to how good these guys are and how clean they want to make it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's about the drivers, you know, they're, they're going to make it work and they're going to talk some talk amongst themselves and they're going to ultimately it is somewhat self policing. The, the admins do have to do some, some policing on our end, but for the most part, I, I racing and racing in general can also police itself. You know, you don't look away the guy's driving you. You talk to them and figure it out. Sometimes the talking doesn't work out very well. And you got to give a guy a nudge and let them figure it out for themselves. And for the most part, we haven't had a lot of that, but there's been some of that. It's going to happen. Yeah, the other benefit, at least in the Cup Series, is you've got uh, Nicole, that's what she said, Creasel in race control. That has been a huge, uh, huge step in the right direction. I uh, I tell her every week, and I thank her as as often as I can. She is um, she is not just a good admin. She is not just a an aspiring driver. She's getting better, but she is a good person, and that's that's hard to come by. I think I think it's become harder and harder to come by in the world for sure. Uh, that is definitely the case. And uh, wrapping up, talking to you, anything uh, you would suggest to any new leagues or any leagues out there that are struggling right now? I, I would say the best thing to do is um, things are not always as bad as as they seem. I, I think you got to make sure you find the the bad egg. It's it's there. We've all had one. I think BRR's had a few, if not more than a few. And for the most part, you get rid of those guys, and you're going to take off. I wouldn't try to kill it. Uh, I wouldn't set out to be uh, the best league in the world and go try to take over the Coke, Coke, Coke series, all that stuff. That's not going to happen. Uh, just stay planted and get rid of the problems. And it, things are not as bad as they seem to be whenever you actually take a step back and look at it. Well, that is awesome. Stick around because I'm going to get your input here in a minute. But looking over the broadcast schedule for tonight, Jones BS Racing's winter season continues tonight at IRP. That'll be an interesting one. Um, of course, XCal goes to Charlotte Tuesday night with no pit road speed limit. We touched on that earlier, Jared, but that's a little bit of a scary one. Yeah, I, uh, I had to talk to Gerald a little bit about clarification on that one as to how that's going to work under caution and different things. But uh, definitely tune into that one because we've FKR has a solid lineup of uh, international talent for sure and a couple... A couple of Americans that just want to go fast, so <laughs> so we'll see we'll see what we can do. Uh, you knew how close I was at Atlanta last year. I I got killed at Michigan, but I think we've got a shot at this. You definitely do. Wednesday night we'll have Nowski uh, returning finally at Daytona, which will be interesting because some of the BRR drivers will be in that one. Uh, home Motorsports Thursday night goes to Las Vegas. NSS Sunday morning will be at Hockenheim Ring. And BRR is back at Vegas uh, next week where Richie West got his first uh, BRR win at uh, Vegas. And that was rather dramatic. In fact, I think he still owes me a $10,000 fine from that interview. Yeah, Richie. Uh, Richie will definitely. Richie loves that track for sure. It's a uh, Vegas is a fun one. Uh, very wide open, very fast. Uh, different lanes there. It should be an interesting race. It definitely will be. And folks, don't forget we will have uh, streams throughout the week. Of course, Thursday night is the HTSAI Community Convoy. Sunday afternoon we have the HTSAI Community Hunt. And we have, as we work on the schedule this week, well, guess what? We're going to have more community stuff going on. Uh, we've got that Wreckfest server, thanks to Mike and Tim. So we're going to be setting up something for that one night a week. Uh, we have got so much stuff coming. We have a new schedule coming out, hopefully, this week. We're still trying to figure everything out. Plus, we're working on the schedule to um, set up some uh more stuff so you guys get more content even when we're not streaming so there is a lot coming there's upgrades coming to twitch youtube and facebook there's a uh, more stuff going to be done on twitter 
and on Instagram, so you can follow us on all of that stuff. And of course, we're going to be doing this every Monday. We will release a new podcast with uh, a lot of great stuff, more interviews, and more exciting stuff. So you guys definitely look forward to that. Jared, thank you so much for hopping in with us this morning. Of course, Doug, anytime. And guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think, what you want, what you want me to not do, what else you want to see added to the podcast. And until uh, we see you on the track tonight, have a great day, everybody.